Okay, this video is about Dr. William C. Roberts revisited. There was a previous video about him as being one of the nutrition heroes. Please let me know if you can hear my voice adequately. Somebody told me my voice wasn't uh, loud enough on one of the previous videos. Okay, so what's the point? William Roberts has made great contributions to atherosclerosis. He's considered one of the best uh, atherosclerosis researchers in the world, uh, the best athros one of the best atherosclerosis pathologists in the world. He wrote this great paper called Quantitative Extent of Atherosclerosis in Major Epicardial Coronary Arteries at Necroscopy, American Journal of Cardiology, 2018. He summarized the findings from 2,000 autopsies in patients with like you know coronary events. Um, he says that about only one out of 500 patients has significant genetic abnormalities to increase their cholesterol and their risk of coronary artery disease. So it's almost never genetics. A lot of times when you hear, you know, everybody in my family's fat and has coronary artery disease. Well, that's because they're all, you know, eating meat and oil and processed food. Okay, so one thing he says that is good is he talks about, in his opinion, inflammation is a myth as a cause for coronary artery atherosclerosis. And that's actually a very big statement because there's a lot of researchers, including a lot of Ivy League researchers, that are claiming inflammation is this major contributor to atherosclerosis. And they base that on elevated C-reactive protein in the blood. And the funny thing is the persons who dispute that are the pathologists like him and Dr. Sloop who say, oh, bullshit, we look at atherosclerosis under a microscope, there's not that much inflammation there. That's not the causative thing there. And they, you know, Sloop says that he thinks elevated CRP in the blood is because it's functioning as a myokine because the skeletal muscles can't restore their glycogen adequately in the postprandial phase because of the hypoxia caused by Rouleau formation. So I know I got a little complex there, but... Trust me, if you study atherosclerosis, that's a very big statement. Inflammation, he believes, is a myth. Um, he also shows the, the atherosclerotic plaque itself is mostly fibrous tissue. There's about 15% fat or cholesterol in it, and then a little bit of calcif calcification in there, progressively more calcified with time. But the point is, that's like a typical hematoma reabsorbing. Okay, I'm going to get to some more interesting stuff. This was just to lay the baseline. Here's the big stuff. Coronary artery disease was always diffuse. It's never a single vessel. Like you hear that all the time, single vessel coronary artery disease, you know, <laughs> bullshit. It's always diffuse. And it's always diffuse in about similar severity in all the coronary arteries. So that's a major statement. So what he's basically saying is you can't just stent one tiny little location and expect the atherosclerosis to go away. In the middle of an acute myocardial infarction, a stent could save your life or you open up an occluded artery. That's wonderful. Okay, but in the typical chronic setting of chronic cardiac pain, angina, you're not going to fix the problem with a stent. You're not going to easily fix it with a bypass, all right? The point is he's making it. It's diffuse. Anything that's diffuse, you're going to need a systemic, a total body type of therapy, which is, you know, of course, low-fat vegan diet. He also mentioned that a cardiac cath, 50% stenosis, is really 75% stenosis at autopsy because when they estimate a stenosis at cardiac cath, they're comparing it to the adjacent artery. The adjacent artery... Like we said, it's always diffuse, so it's narrowed as well. So they underestimate the severity of the atherosclerotic disease. Okay, some of the other really good things he did. Uh, I'm going to get to the things that I disagree with him on, you know, in the second half of this talk. It's a real short talk, only one slide. But um, great stuff that he did. You know, he's pointing out in his research with herbivores, it's easy to make a herbivore uh, to get atherosclerosis. Just feed them high fat. It, it always does that, okay? You can't do it in a carnivore. They're not designed the way we are. You know, and here's another important point to realize. Every animal has a, desire, a diet that is designed for. Humans are designed to eat a plant-based diet. A plant-based diet makes them skinny, healthy, and keeps their arteries open. A high-fat diet um, plugs up their arteries. Also, people sometimes ask me, what do I think of such and such a, a nutrition doctor? And, and I can tell you, if they don't recommend a very low-fat vegan diet, I disagree with them, okay? And I know that most of them don't. There's tons of nutrition doctors out there recommending all kinds of high-fat foods. I disagree with that. In my extensive study of nutrition literature, you want your fat low, very low. So I've actually switched and, uh, to calling my diet a very low-fat diet. You want it definitely below 10%, okay? Um, and I think you're going to have a hard time getting below 10% if you're eating any oil, or a lot of these other uh, uh, fatty foods. I'm, I'm not a believer in them. Okay, and I think that's the same point of view, basically, that uh, Kempner had, Dr. Walter Kempner and Dr. McDougall, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. 
and uh, Pritikin overall. I mean, there's little minor things we could debate, but that's, that's not a real point here. All right. Um, of course, we got the physiology of a herbivore. So you feed us high fat diet, we get atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is the main reason people die. And it's not just atherosclerosis. The same things that cause atherosclerosis cause cancer. Okay. They also cause stroke. They basically make humans sick. Uh, by the way, William Roberts has his own YouTube channel. It's called William C. Roberts, MD. His most recent video in terms of when it was made, I believe, is probably 2009. Um, he says, now here's where I disagree with him. He says, cholesterol is the only essential thing needed for ASP. ASP means atherosclerotic plaque. He said, and this I like. He said, you can blow smoke in a mouse's face all day and it won't get atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, so what's the, what's the joke about that? Well, first of all, yeah, atherosclerosis causes cholesterol. High cholesterol causes atherosclerosis because it, 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 you know, LDL cholesterol is a bridging molecule. It overcomes the zeta potential of red blood cells and causes them to stick together. Zeta potential is the negative charge around the outer surface of a red blood cell. LDL cholesterol is a positive charge. It's the right size, and it gets the red blood cells to stick together. Dr. Sloop has written about that, um, causing a low formation, sticking together of red blood cells like a stack of coins. All right. So that's true. That's good. Okay, but now we're getting into something else a little bit different. You can blow smoke in a mouse's face all day and it doesn't get atherosclerosis. So the point of that is if a person just smokes cigarettes, like in this case the mouse, they don't get significant coronary artery disease or um, cervical carotid artery disease. We call that extracranial atherosclerosis. But the Japanese had lots of intracranial atherosclerosis. And you now the confounding variable is the Japanese also ate a lot of sodium. Many of them were eating over 10 grams a day, some of them 15 grams a day, and that's contributing to high blood pressure. High blood pressure damages the arteries in the brain and it causes intracranial atherosclerosis. So, you know, you got to be careful saying cholesterol is the only thing that causes atherosclerosis. Smoke and with sodium causes intracranial atherosclerosis. That's why they had a lot of strokes. This, I'm talking back in the 1960s and whatnot with the Japanese. Okay, and the other thing that's interesting about the Japanese, despite smoking a lot of cigarettes and eating tons of sodium, they really didn't have much cancer, nor did the Papua New Guineans. Um, so that's interesting. The point being is the high-fat diet, likely associated with high meat too as well, it dramatically increases cancer risk. And the cigarette smoking, yes, it's a risk factor, but without the high fat diet helping to induce hypoxia in the tissues, you know, the metabolic theory of cancer and whatnot, there's not that much cancer. Okay, so that's a big thing to know. That's another reason why I want fat low. Fat contributes to tissue hypoxia, decrease in oxygen delivery to tissues. It contributes to the development of hypertension, which damages arteries and causes tissue hypoxia over time. Contributes, number three, to diabetes, which causes uh, tissue hypoxia over time from damage of the arteries. So all of these things are causing tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia increases the risk of cancer. So these are key points that when you fix your problem of uh, being, you, you minimize your atherosclerosis risk factors, you're minimizing your cancer risk factors. It's just a double win. You also minimize your dementia risk factors. It's a big win all around. And what I'm doing here is just taking it a step further than uh, the understanding of Dr. Roberts at this time. Okay, um, he also says, Makes the good point. Yeah, he knows cholesterol is a major risk factor for myocardial infarction and coronary artery disease, you know, CAD and atherosclerosis because when you lower cholesterol, the risk of a heart attack dramatically decreases. Yeah, he's right. He's absolutely right about that. He's also absolutely right that, you know, you don't, raising HDL. So many people think HDL raising is like the goal. No, that's not. He says there's no evidence that raising HDL is beneficial. He says there's lots of evidence that lowering LDL is beneficial. Yeah, because it overcomes the data potential. Now, here's where I disagree with them. You can get a myocardial infarction with a normal cholesterol if you've got something else that causes the blood to clot. So that's a key point. Atherosclerosis is a blood clot. That's an important thing to get because until you get that, you can never go anywhere. And don't think doctors know much about atherosclerosis. I can assure you from talking to numerous doctors and being a doctor for over 30 years and working with tons of doctors that work in atherosclerosis, interventional radiologists, cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, vascular surgeons. Believe me, I spend tons of time talking to people in these fields. Most of them think of atherosclerosis like a plumber thinks. We have a blockage here. Should we stent it? Should we do a surgical bypass graft? And what I'm saying is, I don't think I've ever met a single doctor in my life in person who actually has read about the physiology, pathophysiology of atherosclerosis and understands hemorrheology and atherothrombosis theory. You know, I've spoken to the researcher, Dr. Sloop, 
and he's the world's best researcher on the subject. I've actually spoken to him many times. We were sort of fascinated with each other's work, and we ended up talking to each other a bunch of times about atherosclerosis because I wanted to understand it. Um, let's see, what else? And he's, and he's also a pathologist, and that's also what's funny. And you're going to see this too a lot of med times in medicine. The doctors that specialize in a field, they have to practice the standard conventional way in that field if they want to get paid and if they don't want to piss off their coworkers, if they don't want to piss off their referral doctors. So it's very often the case that the experts, so-called experts in the field, they never discover anything and they really don't know anything outside of their conventional point of view versus you take somebody who doesn't usually work in that field, they come in and they, uh, they study it without preconceived notions and biases. So Sloop, pathologist, and this guy, Roberts, pathologist, they look at atherosclerosis under a microscope. They go, you know what? I don't see inflammation here. I don't see that many bacteria. It's not, bacteria theory don't explain this. And they recognize that cholesterol is relevant, but cholesterol is not the whole deal. It's a blood clot, okay? And when you start thinking it's a blood clot, all of a sudden you can explain tons of things. I look at atherosclerosis every day. I don't just read papers. I, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cerebral angiograms, body arteriograms, you name it. And I look at CT angiograms all the time, magnetic resonance arteriograms. And I can tell you, it looks like a blood clot. Okay, that's what it is, all right? And don't get me wrong, there's there's cholesterol related to it, etc. All right, what else is useful? Um, his own paper talks about atherosclerosis being a blood clot, how it has a laminated uh, appearance under a microscope, how it recanalizes, open up just the way like blood clots open up in the leg a lot of times. Um, so anything that in increases blood clotting proteins, like fibrinogen, the acute phase reactants, will make the blood more prothrombotic. That includes inflammation. That's why it actually is a partial risk factor, even though that's not what's happening inside the atherosclerotic plaque is what was meant earlier. Psychological stress increases because it's the same thing like caffeine and sleep deprivation. So they all increase the risk of blood clots forming. Diabetes and hypertension over time damage arterial walls, which will decrease oxygen delivery to tissues and can increase the risk of thrombosis. Cholesterol theory is a subset of atherothrombosis theory. That's the big one that includes everything else is atherothrombosis theory. And Sloop is the, the best proponent in the world of that. Um, Dr. Roberts, what I also disagree with him. He says, well, he says patients aren't willing to eat the plant-based diet. He's actually right about that. Vast majority of patients, in my experience, won't do it. But it's also the case that their doctors don't know and the patients don't know about it. He's also a speaker for a company that makes statins. So he really emphasizes and promotes the benefits of statin. I think he overdoes it on that. Uh, but he's, he's big on that. Okay, uh, the best way to prevent atherosclerosis, like we talked about this plenty of times, very low fat, low sodium, 100% plant-based, no caffeine, no alcohol. And, and the point I'm saying is you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to be a genius. Anybody could do this. In the blue zone, they got all these illiterate people they can't even read. And they're healthier than all these American professors, including American doctors. That's funny, okay? If you live in the in a place where they eat a plant-based diet, you could be illiterate, <laughs> never open a book in your life, and be a lot healthier than a typical American uh, professor or physician because they don't really know atherosclerosis, but they're in a, a community that eats a high-fat diet. Okay, here's a quote from the Bible. Love covers a multitude of sins, 1 Peter 4, 8. And what's funny about that, vegan religion. Just eat low-fat vegan, and you don't really need to know that much more. You'll probably have open arteries, and you'll have a low risk of cancer. Don't get me wrong. I want to know as much as I can. I want to try to get the best possible result. But what I'm just saying is to just get the, the most valuable thing, that guy Dan Putin with the Blue Zone said, basically, if a patient eats, in his opinion, beans and one other thing, I forgot what it is, some type of plant food, uh, they'll get most of the benefit. All right, and then of course, there's the other stuff. You know, get your sunshine, vitamin D, get your exercise, sense of purpose, at least one good relationship, stress management, helps others, religion, all that stuff. So anyways, I uh, hope that was helpful. Just wanted to make that point about atherosclerosis.